We're rolling. I don't know. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me go ahead and call this meeting to order. Excuse me. This is the March meeting for the Ralph Lamb County Zoning Board of Appeals. For those of you that may have never been here, let me explain how we operate so you can keep up with us. I will call each case by case number and case name. Staff will come to the lectern, will give us the request. There will probably be questions and or discussions among board members with staff. Once we are satisfied, we understand what has been presented. We will, I will ask if there are any persons here in support or if the, <coughs> if, ap <coughs> if the applicant is here and would, would like to give us any additional information, please come to the lectern, give us your name and address for the record, and give us the information you'd like for us to take under advisement. Again, there's possibility, probability of discussions or questions from board members amongst ourselves or back and forth to you. Once we are satisfied we have heard the pro side, then I would ask if there are any persons here in opposition or if there are any persons here that have questions about what is being requested. If so, please come to the lectern, give us your name and address for the record, and give us the information you'd like for us to take on your file. Normally, cases are settled here today. However, it is in the bylaws of our operational manual that should we feel like information is lacking or parties need to talk to possibly resolve some issues, we do have the right to postpone for 30 days until the next regularly scheduled meeting and put any action off until then. Uh, before I call the first case, has, if you would, on the back table, there is a sign-in sheet. Please sign in with your name and address so we'll have a record of attendance. The first case that we're going to call is Lowndes County Case VAR 2017-02, Rodney Kane, 6143 USI, Highway 41 North, Ohio. Ms. Carmella. Good afternoon, members of the board. Our first case, um, we don't have two cases this month, but our first case is AR 2017 a request by Haynes Creekside RV Park. The property is located in the northern end of the county outside of the city limits of Haywire um, and is developed as an RV park. Um, the zoning of the property is planned development, which is a master plan um, that's presented before the Board of Commissioners and um, whatever's on the plan, that's what you, you know, are, are limited to. In this case, Mr. Kane has, um, he originally had the property rezoned plan development back in 2012, and last year he updated his plan um, because the property is developing out so well. One of the requirements of plan development is that traffic circulation shall not route um, commercial traffic through residential areas within or adjacent to the plan development. In this case, you will see the call out <coughs> point. There is a driveway that is located on an adjacent lot um, for which Mr. Kane also owns. Um, it's developed as a mobile home subdivision. He has improved that driveway as a secondary driveway to his RV park. Well, the standards don't allow that. So he's requesting <coughs> the variance to be able to use that northern um, driveway. Um, it's very limited. Um, his main driveway is, is to the south, um, where his office is, where people check in, things of that nature. But he does want the flexibility to use that northern driveway to access the park. He says it's very limited. Um, it's controlled by him. Um, there are actually some um, single-family dwellings where the driveway is that's the driveway. Um, there are some single family dwellings and it's, it hasn't presented a problem. The only thing we caution Mr. King is that DOT or GDOT may require him to do some, some extra things to it. But it's wide enough, um, it functions, and staff didn't see a problem with this and it's recommended to go on. All right. Any 
questions, any discussions from the board members? All right. Uh, is anyone here representing Mr. Kane on this issue would like to come to the lectern and give us any additional information? Is there anyone here in support that would like to say anything? Is there anyone here in opposition to this request? And anyone that has questions about what's being requested? Was there any contact to your office, Carmel? No, sir. None. All right. Any other questions? Any discussions before I call the question? You want to give me a motion on this request? That's a motion that we uh, review the fact based on uh, standard four, standard D, review the various and ultimately recommend that this is be approved. I have a motion on the floor, Dr. Howell, to Approve the request as presented, citing criteria D. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. I have a second. All in favor, please raise a hand. Unanimous. Good luck with it. I'll know if you would notify Mr. Kane that it was all right. Assessing my taxes. <laughs> yeah. uh, our second request is a variance to the maximum floor area allowed for an accessory building. So the property is known as the Thompson subdivision, um, aka uh, North Oak Street subdivision, been in place since the 70s. In this case, the applicant has an accessory building in the back that he would like to demolish and replace with a metal building. He's just over the square footage requirement. He's allowed up to 800, no, he's allowed up to 600, I'm sorry. Um, and he's requesting to have a 780, so a variance of 180 square feet is what he's requesting. His lot size is four tenths of an acre. He's just lacking a tenth to be able to do this as a matter of right. And staff is recommending approval. We didn't see where this would um, cause a detriment or have an adverse effect on neighboring. All right. Any discussions, any questions from the board at this time? Being no questions, is there anyone here that would like to speak in behalf of this request or the applicant? Would you like to give us any additional information? Sure. I'm George Perez. Um, the main reason for it is that there's been a lot of that. I could probably get to my neighbor's seven police report in the last two and a half months. Those houses were built without garages, carports. The closing of carport is about $3,500. So for me, it makes sense, being that I'm a single dad with three boys, to, you know, like lock up four wheelers, dirt bikes, stuff like that, to go ahead and have a larger building. So if you look at the picture, you'll see the side in the front is just falling apart. So that's why I put in my request. I wanted to do it legit. So this way, when I have power, they pull permits. It's not, oh, Mr. Perez, you never did anything right, you know, and then I bought a building for, you know, $9,000. I got a building. So it's, it's pretty cut and dry. I put everything in there. But if you have any questions for me, I'm here, so feel free. And where you're planning to put it, if you can and will meet all setbacks? Absolutely. I will request, I will put in a request for a variance of 20%. I guess I can put in a request for the setback up to 20%. So this is approved. I'll put in another request to see if I can get approved at 20%. So this way it can go closer to the property line. Because right now, I guess, uh, you know, right now I'm actually, the structure that's up there is a couple of feet closer than what it's supposed to be. Because um, I want to say it might be 10 feet, and right now it's at 6 feet. The property line, you know, but like I said, it's, that building was put up in '78. You know, they poured concrete, so I don't know what the there were covenants or what the rules were back then. But right now, the structure's not it's not perfect. You know, okay, but 
but I will, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna put it 10 feet, put in the, well, I'm not gonna put it in yet. I'm gonna put in the request to get that 20%. If I can get that, if not, then I stick with, you know, okay. 10 feet from the property line. Right, the, the, the question was, in the absence of any kind of uh, administrative, I keep thinking, administrative experience, you can meet the minimum set oh, of requirements. Any other questions in this question? Why couldn't he have applied for the variance in the setback at the same time that he is requesting the square footage there? He could have, but he felt confident that um, the administrative variance or waiver that we can do was enough for him. And the rules back then were eight feet off the side, five feet off the rear. So well, I know there's plenty of backyard regardless. Mm -hmm. Yes. I just hated to think he might have to pay another fee to come back. Yes. We appreciate it. We, we very much appreciate people that want to do it right instead of come back and hang their heads and say, please forgive me. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Any discussion? Thank you, sir. All right, appreciate it. Is there anyone else here in support of this application? Is there anyone here in opposition to this application? Or anyone here that has a question about what is being requested? Was there any contact to your office from Miller? No, sir. No. Any other questions, discussions before I call the question? I make a motion to move to uh, bring them, move them, uh, Accept the request as presented, signed country with T. I have a motion on the floor, Mr. Alvarado, <coughs> to accept the request as presented, signed criteria D. Do I have a second? I have a second from Mr. Corwin. All in favor, raise a hand. Unanimous, good luck with it, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for, for, for observing the rules. Okay, uh, under other business, we have approval of minutes. Did anybody see anything, changes, deletions, adjustments? <coughs> Can I get a motion to accept the minutes? I have a motion, Mr. Alvarado, to accept the minutes as presented. Do I have a second? Second. Second, Nancy. All in favor, unanimous, thank you very much. Uh, new business, old business. Anything new to talk about? Anything old to talk about? Yes, sir. Tracy is out to pass out um, the roster of you all's terms. I know a couple of you all are. The term expires this year, and I believe we have Dr. Housel, um, Gretchen, Gretchen, and Mr. Chairman, Mr. Stritton. I think you all's terms are up this year. So we can begin the conversation of whether or not you're interested in serving another term, or we can put that on, on our agenda for nominations or recommendations to the Board of Commissioners. So there's two county appointees and one city appointee. The next cycle for the city, council will be looking at those, I believe, at their May 10th or 11th meeting. Don't hold me to that, Mr. Strickland. I will look at dates and I'll shoot you an email. Um, if you're interested in serving again, I will email you a copy of the application in the ethics form. Um, deadline for city applications are May the All right. Any questions? Any comments? I'll go again if you have me. <laughs> All right. Let's see who will. Dr. Howell, are you ready to get off? You want to fly again? Oh, Dr. Howell. Oh, Dr. Howell. Things have changed. I've got to really evaluate the personal situation. It's been a good one. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. This is your second. Second or third? Third. Time flies. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, 
That's a lot. <laughs> okay, well, I reckon we need to go ahead and at least put the word out that we have at least one vacancy without an applicant. Uh, or if you all know anybody who may be interested, you can contact me, Tracy, and we'll reach out to them. Um, please let us know. Okay. Any other discussions? Any old business to deal with? May be around the corner. May come. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we stand adjourned. Thank you very much.